in today's video we're going to be showing uh, basically how to, how to uh, avoid sticky buttons like uh, HMI problems you know like if you hit a button and uh, say for instance the button got stuck or uh, you know if you hit this button start button right here and it got stuck uh, generally speaking that's like a, a communications lag or maybe even improper uh, front-end programming from the HMI so what I'd like to do is kind of show you an instance that uh, is pretty easy to avoid that and uh, like a best practice that I've kind of learned over the years. So uh, real quick, we're, we're back in the uh, process library 3.5 HMI system. Uh, just as a general sample application that Rockwell has, um, I, I am emulating this whole system. So um, if you look, you know, it, it is fully run in the emulator. Um, and I uh, do have the uh, HMI application over. If uh, you would like to see how I develop that uh, or restore that, I should say, uh, basically just um, come back to the, uh, I'll, I'll have the videos in the show notes below, but you can go back and look at the, the old videos that I did a couple days ago or uh, earlier this week. So uh, that, without further ado, let's go get kind of straight to the point. So uh, if you wanted to come up here to the dose and sequence, right? and you wanted to uh, come up and just directly hit this start button instead of having to go through and um, you know pull up all the screens to hit the start button uh, first off let's find out how we we uh, we find the information that we need and so we know we're in the sample uh, sample sequencer screen so let's just go into basically our, we go into uh, all of our displays and we come down and we find our sample sequencer so we come down and basically find it open the screen up and you can tell uh, this is exactly the screen that it, it shows uh, this is a global object so we have to treat it like that so what, the way we can tell is we can look at global object parameters uh, and see exactly what is being preloaded into this button when it's pressed um, it's calling another, another screen so um, if you look at it you can look at animation, uh, you can look at tag substitution, um, I think if you dig down into it you can find animation but you can't, you can't really get to it. Um, this is because it's a global object so let's, what we have to do is we have to get edit the base object and basically you're not editing it you're just trying to find the base object. At this point you can go and you can hit tag substitution and you're wanting to look for the screen that's being called up. So all we're looking for is basically a display. So right here you have display and you have uh, the faceplate, right? Or you have the quick. Uh, so what we, we want to do is over on the side over here, just notate right here where we can pop this up. We can basically come in, copy this. Uh, again, uh, I can't say that enough that the... Uh, my favorite tool in this is uh, probably going to be the, the notepad. So uh, the reason I get to this is because this is what's important to me right here is understanding where I, what display I'm pulling up. And what I'm looking for is I'll look for the uh, RA sequencer, RA sequence, and then base plate right here. So this is the screen it's going to pull up. And when it pulls that screen up, uh, you think, you know, right off the bat that you could actually go in and and uh, just directly look at the tag that it's looking for, right? So, really, what's happening is if we looked at that, we do animation, uh, we can do tag substitution. Again, we're not going to get any anything out of that. Uh, so, if you look again, this is a, a global object. So this is a global object built inside of a global object. So it's kind of layered. Um, so again, you go to edit base tag, or base object, and you'll see that it pops up the same screen, right? So this is basically something, a set of global objects that they had pre-done, um, and they just they separated them into one uh, on the same screen, but on the it separated them as far as uh, what they're calling. So at this point, we should be able to go to um, you know, tag substitution and find exactly what we're looking for. Or you can just, you know, keep drilling down into it and find exactly where they're, so they have visibility, 
Um, I believe you hit edit again. You can see, uh, let's see, you can see different elements about it. So let's, let's edit one more time. Test visibility again, edit. Uh, so e it's easy to s just to go straight to it and uh, for time's sake we'll just, just do tag substitution. So what we're looking for is the command uh, sequence start. So we want to keep that tag and again we'll come back and put that tag in there and we want to go back to our other screen right here that shows what we're loading um, so right here we're loading the uh, the sequencer right here so we want to keep this we want to grab this tag and basically put it with that one so what we're if you look at, at what we're, we're, we're going to be looking for we can basically put it in there just just like this so that would be the tag we're actually looking for. So in the in the PLC or in the uh, CLX processor, what we can do is we can go back and find this, and I'll go ahead and do that right now. As I'll go in and just hit paste, and you can see that it pulls that that direct uh, tag up. At that point, you can come back and look for this. So we're looking for uh, O command, and then it's looking for underscore sequence start. So you can just basically scroll down and find that. So you see you have a bunch of O commands, which is basically operator commands. Uh, and then you have sequence start right here. So that's our tag. If we copy that and put it right below here you can see that it lines up perfect with what we found right and that kind of co goes back to the other uh, uh, other video I did the other day as far as showing how to find stuff and how to you know basically uh, easily detect what you're looking for to easily troubleshoot so what I'm getting at is um, what if let's say you didn't want to pull up the screen you wanted to make it pretty easy I guess just to say to um, to start the system so what you would do is you come out and you come and let's say for instance we're on this screen right here we, instead of open this and, and uh, open it pop up another screen we just wanted to have a sequence start so basically a button just to say okay well let's just start it so you just add a button and you would come in and in actions you would click uh, you can do a, a run command right what you would do is you would set or you can actually come in here and I believe it's in commands as well uh, so logic and I think it is in want to let's just pull this down right here it's set value so you can set tag and then paste this in here and then you can come back and, and say one and then finish. So what you want to do at that point is the best thing to do is type pause. And then if you want to pause for one second, you just type one second. And then again, you would come back and what I like to do is just copy and paste this and then set a zero. So what that does is as soon as you press it, it sets a one to this bit right here you know via, via this command you just did right sorry about that so via this command you just did and then it's going to pause for one second and then it's going to set a zero to that bit so no matter if you have a control lag or you have a communications lag or not it's going to this, this is the best route to go about it so uh, now let's let's put some text to this. So let's just call this uh, sequence start.
So we'll just, you know, for the sake of argument, we'll just call it sequence start, push button, and we will get the correct. So it say, you know, you can easily see it. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save this. And we'll go back to our HMI. And we'll refresh. Right? So after we refresh, we'll go back to our sequencer screen. And what we'll notice, if you look down here, um, and this is the diagnostic screen we put up when we first made this, is you'll see that it issues a start command, and then you see a pause, and then set one. So you see that that directly commanded the uh, sequencer, which is right here, directly commanded the sequencer to start. Now, let's just watch that again. So let's stop it. Let's reset it. Okay. Now you see that it's not green. Right? And it started the sequencer. Now we didn't have to pull up the sequencer because we we easily seen exactly what it was doing. Right? We easily found the tag. We easily issued the tag and made an outside button without having to drag a lot of global objects into it and made it real cut and dry. Um, this, this makes it a little bit easier for the end user sometimes, um, but the main focus I wanted to show uh, basically is the use of basically the use of the uh, this basically a set one or set the bit to one. So you're pressing it, you're setting the bit to one, you're pausing, and then you're coming back and <clears throat> then you're setting the bit to zero. And the reason you're doing that is so that you're setting it to one, and if there was a lag or if there's any kind of communications problem, or, or say for instance, uh, um, just any kind of what, what we'd like to call a sticky button, HMI sticky button. So if you had some kind of a um, Windows graphics problem or, or something of that nature, uh, you could still get by uh, pausing and then setting it to one. So you could pause for two seconds. So, so let's just let's change that to two seconds. And then we'll come back and save. And what you'll see down here in the very bottom. And let me refresh. Okay, so uh, what you'll see down here in the very bottom. And let's see. I should be able to pull this up. So what I want to want to kind of highlight, and the reason I'm doing this is, well, that didn't really help. So what I want to kind of highlight is that when I push this button, you'll see the tags come in. So you see it, it set a one, it waited two seconds, and then set a zero. So, and then it started the sequence, right? So it started the sequence right here, then it paused, and then it, it set a zero. So the button, essentially the button right here, is not pressed anymore. Right? So we're still fine, um, if, even if we stopped it right here, and we reset it, and then we come back and we push this button again, it starts again. But see, you don't get any activity that you see as far as, you know, because basically this is a global object inside of a global object. So the fact of, actually, let's stop it, start it. The fact of you collect more data on your front end too, it's like if you're trying to troubleshoot this stuff with uh, the diagnostic list, you collect more data using it this way. And I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. The global object is the best way to do what they're currently doing. Um, basically, I'm, I'm showing the best way to... Uh, set a bit and then uh, check it. So our, uh, basically set it high and then set it low. So some people would come back and basically say let's let's do an action. Let's set the bit high right here and let's come back and when we re release the button when we when we release it we'll go ahead and set a zero. Or even even with that said they'll say set one and then they'll come back and do that. Or they'll say toggle value, or they'll set and release. Um, set and release. Here, here's the thing with the problem with this: when you do a run command, you get control over that set and release. 
So you get control over when, like you can time it with a pause, and you can control exactly when you, you actually do the release, if, you know, as far as if you have a lag or not. If you just come in here and say set 1, then release to 0, or set 0, set release to, to 1, it's going to do that instantaneously. Um, so you're kind of relying on your system being absolutely perfect. And in this day and age, uh, we do know that we have variability in just about everything we do. So um, I'd just like to point out that this is probably the best way that I've seen to mini minimize the, any kind of risk or anything of that, that nature. So uh, just kind of going through it, that's how I just wanted to show uh, you know the proper use of uh, uh, anti-sticky button. Uh, the things that would help, uh, you know, and how to dig down and, and scroll down to an easy, accessible way to start and stop. Uh, so we could do the same thing for a stop if we wanted to, uh, like if we wanted to come up and show the stop button, we could do the exact same thing. But uh, we are kind of running into the, about the over the 15 minute mark, um, and this is the, mainly the, the issue I wanted to show, um, or the, not the issue, but the um, the resolution I wanted to show as far as this video and I can carry on and, and show you a, a couple more different uh, HMI tricks if you'd like um, just drop me a line drop me a comment let me know if you you know this was value added you found this was helpful uh, and just, just like I said don't worry about the syntax so much it does help you if you just search and find it so again if you have any topics you'd like to discuss or you'd like me to go over just uh, just drop me a, a comment or yeah, send me an email um, Either way, that would be great. Uh, but like I said, I, I'm just trying to, you know, basically I, I started this to try to help people out and try to help grow with technology. And I think the more we, we grow and we help each other and, you know, spread the word, it, it, it's going to be uh, more value added to everybody. So, again, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for your time and I and, uh, hope this helped you. And, again, let me know. All right. Thank you.